Hmm. May contain clouds. Hi everyone. Uh, I thought I'd record something a little bit different today. Um, so I managed to find in stock a Sesto Senso 2 uh, autofocus unit that was actually a customer return and it popped up at First Light Optics. And uh, as there's been a stock problem just recently due to uh, COVID, I actually decided to just go for it and snag this. So this will be a quick unboxing of it today and uh, a little first look. So um, as you could expect, it arrived well packaged from First Light Optics. Um, on time, quite rapid considering we've had a overnight snowstorm. Um, I'm actually surprised it arrived at all today. I have to say that um, I also ordered this, which is the uh, Prima Luce Lab Sesto Senso uh, temperature probe. So uh, this should enable, if your software does, um, automated refocusing based on temperature. Um, I'll just put that to one side. So I'll just take a moment to show you around the box. Um, as I said, this is a customer return, so. It, it may not be exactly as a new one, but we'll soon find out. So that's the front. Really nice premium packaging. Um, there it is actually shown on my telescope, which is in a Spree 120, uh, which bodes well for installation, I hope. Let's get in. Okay. So we have a, uh, a quick guide. Looks like a quality control card as well. Apologies if you can hear my dogs. So getting back to it, this is uh, the unit itself, which is actually just as I've picked it up, really surprisingly heavy. Um, it's a nice aluminium construction all the way around with a uh, plastic top. So I just wanted to record a quick edit because um, this Arco port is actually for connection to Prima Luce's own uh, focus rotator, basically. So this is the 12 volt DC port. Now, I have heard from another review that this isn't, uh, and I think it actually states it too on the specifications, but this isn't 2.1 like is commonly found. Um, so you're likely to need one of these, which is a uh, 2.1 one to 2.5 uh, tip positive adapter. So you take your usual um, 2.1 jack, which would power most astronomy gear, pop it into this, and then this will fit into the Prima Luce. Um, it's got a USB-C port, and that's the uh, thermal probe port also by the look. Just pop that down a moment. We have a cigarette power adapter, which assuming uh, it comes naturally with the 2.5 for you. A USB-C to USB-B cable. Uh, and also it looks like a bunch of different adapters for uh, different size shafts on any telescope you may have. I know they also sell extra parts um, if you have a non-standard size telescope. But at least this um, particular focus unit doesn't require brackets and such to fit. It just uses this uh, self-centering clamp here, uh, which fits, well, most standard size telescopes. Um, I do believe it's 25 uh, millimeters. So thanks for watching. I, I may follow up now with a um, an installation video. Cheers. So before you install the Sesto sensor, there's a few little things that I think you really should do before actually getting it into position. Um, so ideally, if you could, you'd need to figure out which one of these bushings uh, you're going to actually need for your telescope. Uh, I happen to know that on the Esprit 120, I'm going to need this red one. Um, you'd be provided with three Allen keys, uh, two large grub screws, and five um, small ones. So you want to take two of the smaller ones and your smallest Allen key. Um, ideally, you want to run these little grub screws just into the bushing until the point where you can only just see it just starting to protrude. I don't know if this is showing properly on the camera, but... 
and then back it out just a touch. So this is, you're not spending um, time fumbling around when it's in position. And take another one. It's two each on these. Let's run that in now and do the same thing. So if you can see through it there, and run it in until it's visible and just back it back out. That's ready for use now, so I'll just put that to one side. The next thing you'll need to do is make sure that this flexible coupling uh, is lined up so it's got two holes for grub screws. These are the large ones that's provided. For that you'll need the middle sized Allen key. I'll just try and um, show you how to put these in now. So you want it lining up with this slot in the bottom and then you can do the exact same thing. So you can see inside there hopefully. Run it in until it just begins to protrude and then back it out until there's absolutely no chance of interference. Um, you then want to rotate it around to the next hole. As you can see that's there, the other one was 90 degrees away. So I'll just run the next one in now. Quite fiddly. And just the same thing again. So it's just visible and back it back out. And uh, there's also, so you've got three of these small grub screws left over. Now what they recommend in the instructions is that you also run these in to the actual body of the clamp. So that once you've used the self-centering clamp, which also by the way, it, I would just pre-tension ever so slightly. So it should come quite loose. Uh, I'd just run it up until you just feel the, the smallest amount of resistance and stop. And then again, you're not spending any time uh, re-keying it unnecessarily. Um, so I'll just run these extra grub screws in. And then it should be ready uh, to actually install on the scope. And again, it's much the same um, rule, really. You obviously want no chance of interference while fitting. Uh, and the minimum amount of keying required uh, when it does come to time for installation. So you can just check with your fingertip really that there's, there's no interference yet. And that's perfect. Right, so we're over at the scope now, about to install the uh, Sesto Senso. So the first thing I'd do before starting anything really is take a note roughly of where your focus position is if you indeed have a gradated focuser. So I can see for me it's out around 72 millimeters. This is just so that when I put the focuser back on, I can get it almost in focus again, straight away. Uh, if you're installing it on an Esprit 120 like me, you also want to push back this uh, rubber that's on the, um, the non-reduced side of the focuser and just find out where your grub screw is located. So you can see I've got it ready here. Um, so. I'm just using the provided Allen keys now from Prima Luce. Uh, I had to go into my own set or anything, but first thing you want to do is remove the micro focus, focus knob. So that's just backed off a bit and a nice easy removal. Put that to one side safely. Now you're going to need the next size up Allen key. Again, locate your, uh, your grub screw. Firmly fit that and a good couple of winds. And that should now be loose and ready for removal. So I'll just take his Allen key back out. Again, put this to one side. So uh, the next task is going to be fitting the small bush in that we just pre run the uh, grub screws into. So we'll just put this in a uh, an easily reached position. I'm back to the small Allen key again. Oops. So I just want to get this nice and tight without going crazy and swinging off Allen key or anything. It's just the uh, the less amount of looseness you have, the less chance of backlash you have. And bear in mind that when this uh, gets cold, everything's going to contract even further. So uh, 
Just keep that in mind when you tighten in. So that's lovely and tight now. So before putting the focuser on next, uh, ideally I want this lined up so that you can see one of the grub screws immediately to reduce the amount of fumbling you're gonna have to do. So you wanna rotate this, ideally. Uh, I've got my focus lock on ever so slightly, but so that when you do tighten down your grub screws, they're not tightening down into the back of, uh, of these. Otherwise you could ruin your threads and make uh, uninstallation really quite difficult. So I'm gonna turn this away 90 degrees. I'll just lock my focuser again. So that when this grub screw bears down here, it's gonna land on a bare piece of aluminium. Okay. I've got that one nice and tight. I'll just undo my focus lock again. So I'm free to rotate this. Uh, I need the second one. So now I'm just using the, uh, the focus control on the other side of the telescope. Let's get the next group screw lined up. So now run that in, also nice and tight. So now it's hanging by the uh, the flexible coupling. It's free to rotate, but um, that obviously makes it easy now to line up for final installation of the clamp. So I'm just gonna try and get this roughly uh, squared as accurately as I can by eye. And now with the larger Allen key offered, uh, I'm gonna start tightening up the clamp screw, just the main one to begin with. Again, it really is uh, its easy, but it is quite fiddly at the same time. So uh, I think that's why the pre-installation and the winding down most of the way of all these screws is worthwhile. Uh, I can just start to feel it tightening now. So one last eye up for level. That looks just about perfect. So now I'm going to start to actually clamp. And again, this wants to be nice and tight to minimize any chance of uh, backlash. All right, that's already uh, lovely and tight. So now we're back to the small Allen key and just the last three screws to finish installation. So I'm going to run this, just make sure these are loose. That one actually ever so slightly tight. So um, before finalizing this uh, main clamp in screws position, I'm just going to double check now that it is still tight without any interference from the, uh, the locking screws and it is. So I can now feel free to run these up. Uh, these last ones. So that's quite tight. I don't think these need to be overly tight, just nipped really enough uh, to stop any chance of rotation. Awkward position on this one. Seems I didn't run that one in quite far enough. And that's it. It's now the last grub screw tight. And that's installed. And with the, the unit off, you can actually still rotate, thankfully, on this. Uh, I just know that it locks up as far well as far as I know when the uh, the unit itself is powered thanks for watching